So welcome, 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 our beloved colleague Jordan. We so appreciate your consistent leadership. And as always at Setsi, we begin all things by giving thanks and acknowledging our creator. We acknowledge all the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation sovereignty. So Jordan, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? Well, thank you, Victor, and thank you so much for having me on. It's uh, great to be with you today. Um, so my name is Jordan. I am the co-founder and CEO of Nominee. Nominee is a learning platform and peer-to-peer -peer network that helps people build the skills that they need to change the world. So at every level, we provide training, support, and resources um, at every stage of, of someone's political career, from deciding to run for office in the first place to building a winning campaign strategy to transitioning into your role and, and governing effectively. We really want to build understanding of, of public policy and how people can create change, whether that's from inside government or outside government, understanding that there's so many ways that, that people can make a difference in their communities. So we are here to, to really empower people to, to turn on that light switch and think, how can I advocate for the causes that I believe in? How can I create and demand change from the elected officials that serve uh, my community? And how can I step up and do that work myself from the inside um, and create change for, for my community and for, for future generations as well? That's incredible. And it's so needed in a time when there's such a lack of civic engagement in so many communities and such deep polarization around such so many social issues and, and just a poly crisis in general. So once again, I applaud your leadership. So my next question, what's inspiring you right now in your work? What has you curious or what's keeping you up at night? So what is really inspiring is that when you get down to it, you know, there's all of these, the, the poly crisis that, that you mentioned, the 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 complex polarizing issues that we face as a is very real democratic backsliding that we're seeing all around the world including here at home in canada is very real very real issues that are threatening our communities are threatening our society and threatening our, our future but when you get down at the community level at the grassroots level I hear so many stories, people tell me all every day where how they want to make a difference, what inspires them to get up in the morning every day and do this work, why they ran for office, why they built an advocacy campaign around, around housing or issues that are affecting them in their communities or homelessness, climate change. These, these future leaders, especially young leaders, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old that are saying, I want to do this work. I want to step up despite the challenges, despite what we hear in the news and the media every day. There's still a lot of reason for hope and optimism. And, and that's why I think it's so important to, to really draw, drive home that message that we can all make a difference in our own ways. Let's start demystifying the process and breaking down the barriers so that everyone has equal opportunity and access to, uh, to create this change that we want to see. Oh, shit. I couldn't agree more. The challenges on the flip side of that, obviously, you, you talked about polarization, and and I think that that is is an issue. You know, this is 2024. The Economist have, has dubbed this as the year of elections, and a historic year, and just in terms of the number um, uh, and importance of the elections that we face globally. Um, and there are some real issues there. Um, I think that it's important when we think about civic engagement and the lack of civic engagement that we start to look at, you know, how we can start to, to break some of that down. You know, I think, again, in, in terms of running for office, particularly, it's getting tougher and tougher, not only to recruit people to run for office in the first place, but also to retain good people once they do step into that role, you know, when, whether it's from polarization or partisanship or an increase in populism or online hate and, and harassment on social media, these are all very real issues that elected officials face. And I think that there's been a continued trend of almost a dehumanization in, in politics where, where folks uh, tend to, to kind of other um, politicians and not see them as 
their neighbors, their friends, their family members, their community leaders that are really in these positions to do good work. And so that is kind of the number one threat. And, and it's about, in, you know, breaking down some of the stereotypes around politics and really shifting the narrative of what it means to engage in the political process, what it means to serve your community in office, and and why that is a noble calling uh, for all of us to to pursue. Ashe, that's incredible. I really applaud you on your leadership and clearly visionary leadership. So my next question, do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work? Yeah, so Nominee was started um, a couple of years ago now. We started first with a uh, mentorship program, which would allow folks that are thinking about dipping their toes into politics or are thinking about pursuing a career in, in public service to, to really ask questions and, and receive that guidance and advice from, from folks who have done it before and have, have been the trailblazers in the community and have broken down some of those barriers to make it easier for the next generation to step up. And so we felt that if we could provide opportunities for, for especially youth, especially um, people from, from historically underrepresented or marginalized communities to connect with people who share their values, who look like them, who represent um, similar, similar issues or causes that they want to fight for, to be able to have those relationships and build constructive um, paths forward in their career in public service. So that was the first step for us, and we've had some amazing feedback on on kind of the the value and impact of, of that as as people do start to start the careers. And then for us next, it was about launching the platform and and more recently releasing our first kind of pl flagship online course, which is Campaign 101. Essentially, a campaign in a box. Everything that you need to to know to build a winning campaign strategy and get elected from how to launch your campaign successfully to communications, to field operations, identifying your vote and getting them out to the polls, to uh, ED operations uh, and everything in between. And so the next phase for us is building on that to, to really expand, as I said, kind of the, the context and, and um, perception of public service and what that means. So when you look at nominee as a platform, what we're building is essentially something like Skillshare or Masterclass, but for politics. And so looking at content and, and courses in four key areas, one campaign, so that's where campaign 101 comes in. The second area is governance, so how to govern effectively once you are elected, whether you are um, an elected official or a political staff or a bureaucrat. Then the third area is advocacy. So again, recognizing that not everyone wants to run for office or, or, or has that ability. So how else can you make a difference from the outside at the community level? And so the advocacy piece is, is, is running through how, how to lobby government, how to build um, advocacy campaigns and grassroots campaigns in your community. And then finally, the fourth and probably biggest and most impactful piece is public policy. So from a baseline level, you know, how do, how do we increase literacy and demystify some of the biggest, most complex issues of our time, from climate change to housing to affordability, economic development and job creation, all of those building blocks of, of, of a productive society and a healthy society, how do we break that down and, and provide resources and training and support for folks to, to grapple if I want to make a difference in climate change, um, how do I actually do that? What are the issues? What are the building blocks that I need to understand to make that that impact? How, and how do I advocate that? And so the next big building block after Campaign 101 for us in terms of courses is, is around political leadership. And so looking at that governance piece, looking at uh, once you are elected, how do you how do you create healthy and supportive environments for yourself as an elected official, but also for your colleagues, for your staff? And how do you create the change that you want to see? The reason why you were elected in the first place, understanding the legislative process, understanding uh, some of the hard and soft skills that you need to succeed from negotiation to crisis communications to uh, conflict resolution, uh, persuasion, and I think the other big piece of that course will be something around mental health and mental well-being in politics, 
understanding that the political ecosystem is becoming more and more frayed, more toxic, more polarized. How do you create a supportive environment for yourself, um, but also for others around you? As, as I said off the top, it is getting tougher to retain good people into office. And part of the reason for that is, is the stressors that impact mental health and well-being um, and the pressure that that creates on an individual serving in that role, but also their family, their friends, their colleagues, their staff, and and the, the system around them as well. Ashe, that's incredible. It's incredible. The platform, the way you've developed it, the entrepreneurial nature to it, but the fact that it's about public good. So it's a mission-driven um, framework. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming you consider yourself a social entrepreneur because if this isn't social entrepreneurship, I don't know what is. Um, so once again, I just applaud you mm -hmm. on your leadership my second last question what is your ultimate goal and what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues that's a great question and i think that you know the the huge opportunity that we have at nominee is that this is the 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 challenges that we're facing in politics first off are challenges that are felt in countries all over the world um you know when you talk about polarization when i talk about the need for more people to run for office, for me, more people to engage in the political process as, as a voter or as a volunteer or as a staffer, and the barriers, the real barriers and, and, and challenges that are associated with that. Those are issues that not only affect us here in Canada, but also in the US and the UK and Australia, across Europe and Africa and Asia, all over the world. And so as we build nominee out over the coming years, our mission is really to have a global impact and and really look at ways to, number one, uh, bolster and safeguard democracy as a whole and, and create opportunities for more people to engage in the process and engage specifically uh, in, in democracy. And then number two, to create and expand literacy in, in public policy and, and issues that affect us, and as, as I said, some of the more complex and, and most pressing issues of our time. And so if you imagine nominee as, as a skill share for politics, well, that means that we can scale to a level that's never been seen before. We can be in countries all over the world. We can build out a content platform that services folks at different stages of their careers and different interests, different passions, and one by one, hopefully have an impact on every single election this year, next year, and into the future. And so it is for us really continuing to build that engine of how we engage with folks at the community level, but also nationally and internationally, and building out the content ecosystem that is going to create that support, create those resources, and boost the confidence and ability and capacity of folks to be able to make a difference. And I think that that is really our role is, is if we can look back 10 years from now and say, here's a story of someone who, who leveraged Dominee as a way to make an impact in his community, or here's someone who is advocating for this particular cause, and she's been able to build a national or global campaign to, to make a difference in that area. You know, those are all markers that, uh, that you know, I think that if you think of the, the idea that Politics should be for everyone, and everyone has the capacity to make a difference. That's really what we're aiming for with nominee. Remarkable. Thank you so much for your leadership, my friend. So my last question, do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action for our listeners and our viewers? Well, thank you so much again, Victor. It's been a great conversation. I think what I would what close with and and really drive people towards is is to to steel yourselves and engage in a way in, in, in politics that, you know, despite the challenges, despite what you see on, on the news or in the media, this is still worth it. Engaging in, in, in the political process, voting, uh, building, standing up for what you believe in, standing up for your values, your principles is still worth it. And so all of us have the ability and capacity to make a difference. Find ways to do that in your own community. There's elections coming up this year at the provincial level in Canada. If you're in BC, if you're in Saskatchewan, if you're in New Brunswick, vote in these elections. Obviously, a federal election coming up um, in the next year or so as well. Vote in that election and, and, and think about, for folks that are listening, 
you know, I know that running for office is not for everyone and it can often be a, a, um, a, a scary thought or an intimidating thought, but if you are passionate about making a difference, there is no better way to do that than to step up and to run for office. And, um, you know, it, with, with Campaign 101, if you are looking at, at taking that first step, at GoNominee.com, you can learn all the uh, information that you need to get started and we'll help you along the way. But that is kind of my closing thought is to, to feel the fear and do it anyway. I see, I see. But I see, pa, 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 thank you so much, my beloved colleague, for all the remarkable, actionable insights you shared, the brilliant platform that you and your colleagues have developed. And once again, the visionary leadership. Civic engagement is more important than ever. And folks like yourself are moving us to a more democratic framework in terms of how we organize our relationships as communities. So once again, I just give thanks for all that you do for so many. And as always at Setsi, we close the way we began by giving thanks to our creator, by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Jordan. I appreciate you. Thank you, Victor.